Josephine, I am so honored to be sitting with you. You have been uh, in my consciousness for some time because I know of your water walks. Mm -hmm. And I have friends and others who have participated in water walks. Not always with you, because you have inspired many others. Yeah. So let's tell a little of that story. Can you tell us about water keepers in Ojibwa tradition? Water keepers are always been, have always been women who are keepers of the water because they carry life within their bodies. And as women, we are life givers, and, and as Mother Earth is a woman, we, we call her Mother Earth, she is also a life giver. So we are kind of in, in, in connection with her. What happens to her happens to women. And as you can see now that women are going through the same thing that she's going through. She's being prostituted, polluted, abused, all kinds of things that are happening to her are happening to the women now, being sold off, traded, you know, polluted, you know, in terms of their, their bodies are not being taken care of. And you began to uh, carry your message beyond your own Ojibwa communities to many other people mm -hmm. through your walking. When did you first decide to start walking with water? I think it, it started in 2000, and the winter of 2002, but it actually, uh, the thinking started in the year 2000 when our Grand Chief talked about women's roles and how water is going to be very expensive. 30 years from now, an ounce of water is going to cost as much as an ounce of gold. He said, if we continue with our negligence. And when he finished talking, he, he looked at the crowd and he said, what are you going to do about it? So I kept thinking, what am I going to do about it? And I kept thinking of the little word, if, if we continue with our negligence. We turned that around, if we discontinue our negligence a lot, we could do a lot. So I started talking to people about it, especially to groups and women, about the importance of water and how we, we need to really think about how it's going to be expensive in the year 2030. And so we started talking about it in the winter of 2002, and uh, one of the girls said, why don't we walk around Lake Superior? And of course we all laughed, and then we we, and then I started t telling them about how we used to walk with the water, pail of pails, pail, two pails of water when, when it was always my, my, my role to do that at home. It was always my mother would sit in bed out and so I had to go and get the water. And so even in winter time, so I had to chop the ice to get the water. So that was, uh, that's how it all started, I believe. So we started walking in 2003 around the, uh, uh, Bad River, Wisconsin is where we started and we only had $85 collected from the people and the Eagle Staff was made for us very quickly. We started Easter Monday and so that's how we started. There's a little difference between walking to, to get some water for your house versus walking to protect the water for the world. Yes. That was a long walk around Lake Superior I think. It was a very long walk. And uh, my thinking is that I would walk, walk to, you know, walk wherever it's, where water is needed. I would walk to, you know, just for the, for generations to come. That's, that's my, my, my motto is to walk the talk and to talk, you know, to talk for the water while I'm walking, pray for the water and sing for the water. And the water that I see as I walk, I, I pray to the water and I offer tobacco the water. I think you also have had many stories along your way. Is there one story that stands out for you from all your walks around all the lakes and the, along the rivers that stays with you? I think Lake Superior is probably the, the most I could think of when I think of her as a very powerful, powerful water. She's very strong. She can she can uh, be very gentle, very strong. She can also, 
you know, uh, the disasters that have happened. Boats, boats have been, uh, or ships have fallen, and she's been very strong. And you don't know, it's, she's un, unpredictable. You don't know what she's going to do from one moment to the next. So when I think of that, I think of women. As she's, she's also a woman. And as women, we're very unpredictable. We, we don't know what to expect from us. So that's, that's my, my interpretation of, of the greatest uh, achievement is the Lake Superior, who she's, I regard her as, as a woman. And so I, I think of her as a woman also. Now you've also helped to create a community of others with whom you're walking and others who have been inspired. Do you see the next generation coming to help you in your work? I certainly hope so, that there will be others who will pick up the, pick up the torch and start walking with the, for the water. And not only that, we have to think about how, how we as, as, as grassroots people, we have to start doing our work for the water and with the water and the environment. Mother Nature really needs us, the animals need us. Our clans. I am. I am of the fish clan, Wasi Sea, which is the uh, the bullhead clan. And I really appreciate how how we have to start working with with our people in the waters. And when I think about how how we our, our next generations are going are not going to be able to afford the water, I think of the present now that we really need to at the grassroots level to start thinking about how. What can we do? Like the question was, what what are you going to do about it? We have to ask ourselves, what can I do about it? So my my my, I suppose my my dream is that we can all work together as as humans, not just not just us Indian people, but people from all walks, the churches, the four colors, the whites, the blacks, the yellow. People can start to work together and and really really motivate themselves to, to start to think about water, how, how can they take care of it and not waste it, not, not to, you know, to wake up in the morning and first, first class water that you drink is going to be how you're going to treat the water during the day. So you think about that and I'm, I'm hoping that we can all work together in that regard because we really need to, to teach our, our leaders, our governments they're not going to do anything about it. It's us that has to do something about it. And when we do something about it, maybe they will they will turn around and say, and look at the people and say they're they're doing something. We have to start doing something for for them too. So I think that's we really need to teach our leadership to uh, to really respect what it is that we respect. I think you're the leader. <laughs> I don't know many. Uh Anishinaabe words, but I know a couple. I know Nibe, mm -hmm. and I know Megwech. Yeah. Uh -huh. So thank you so much. Thank you. And I look forward to talking with you more. Thank you.